and there's 35 facilities that uh, uh, my team manages on a day-to-day -day basis, and that includes uh, tenant, tenant agreements. Um, okay. So there's, there's never any shortage of uh, work to do for our de particular department. You know, it's interesting too, Bob, because when because we've had five new councillors now that are into it a year, but that was a real learning experience for council um, to understand the immensity of of your department, Andrew. They needed to understand what you do, and that's not easy because you can't just put that in one little phrase. I mean, it's so complicated. And so for 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 councillors, new councillors, as the public hearing what you're saying today, this is for many people is new new stuff. And it tells you how complicated and how challenging your department is, for sure. Yeah. How, um, I'm sure you're going to tell me a big number, but what is your budget for all this stuff that you're doing? Well, um, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a big number, Bob. <laughs> um, so our operating budget, which looks after our day-to-day -day stuff, and, and really it, it ensures that we meet legislation and policy that council has enacted for us to maintain that, that asset um, is roughly about $4.8 million for an operating perspective. Um, but from a capital perspective, which again is primarily driven through our asset management plan and our need to sustain specific uh, assets, um, that's roughly, I think this year it was roughly $6.8 million where 90% of that is, is projects that are directly attributed to uh, my particular department. Mm -hmm. And I understand that um you're trying some new things for road maintenance, for winter road maintenance, for sidewalks and roads to change maybe how you've done it in the past. I understand that this freeze-thaw situations that we've gone through have created some big challenges and that you, you have some solutions to make that a little better. Well, I don't think I have all the solutions, Bob, but uh, certainly uh, a step forward in the right direction. Um, I've, I've spoken to the community in the past, like you've mentioned about the freeze and thaw cycles. And, and the challenges associated with that. Um, years gone by, and I'll say as recently as five years, five years ago, um, roads, you know, the temperature typically stayed cold, mm -hmm. and, and roads that were snowpack condition, and what I mean, they're not, they're not bare surface, and we do that purposefully, um, were easily managed. But now with the, the freeze-thaw cycles, and it's not just exclusive to Gravenhurst, I mean, it's rampant yeah. throughout all of Ontario, right you start to get rutting and pockets and those, those roads tend to become challenging to, to, to drive. So mm -hmm. we've, we've taken a step back and in response to that, uh, we, we've trying some new products and uh, one of those products is a, is a treated product. So it, it adheres to the road better. Um, it's not as dependent on uh, uh, temperature cycles. It can work from uh, very low temperatures to very high temperatures. Um, it, and we're actually using less of it. So there's a bit of a cost savings there, so. But the thing I hear from so many people is, um, if you enjoy the arts in some way, shape, or form, if you were to go to Toronto, mm -hmm. which some of our productions are as good as yes. any of those productions in Toronto, the challenge is, in Toronto, you got to drive down there, you got a two-hour drive, you got to pay probably twenty to thirty dollars to park yes. if you're lucky. Probably dinner on top of that. To the Opera House in Gravenhurst, you can park free of charge. Yes, you can walk literally to the Opera House, yes. and there's a number of restaurants that are close proximity. Mm -hmm. A whole lot easier. Yes, and still great performances. Yes, yes, it's amazing. Yes, yeah, and that and it is amazing, and mm -hmm. uh, and we actually uh, uh, most of our. Um, our actors throughout the summer theater season can be seen in Mervish Productions mm -hmm. or Stratford. Yeah. So, so we are, uh, you know, um, finding our talent from the same pool as, mm -hmm. as those other festivals. So that that yeah. is it is wonderful, and you're absolutely right for a fraction of the cost. And, yeah, and we exactly. like to say that it's um, park mm -hmm. once, and uh, and you yeah. can do all of these things, and certainly is shopping in there as well. Yeah. And if you talk to some mm -hmm. of the shops downtown, they will tell you we know when there's a matinee because okay. our store is full okay. before yeah. or after the yeah. show so that's wonderful mm -hmm. we're also building our group business too mm -hmm. um, which is which is really really important 
important to bring in those busloads of people as yeah. well. Yeah. And we're finding that they are asking for other things to do. And and you know, yes, beyond uh, our packages that we have with the Muskoka steamships or hotels and, and restaurants and so on, they want to be able to get off the bus, see a show, maybe do some shopping. And, mm -hmm. and those are all of the wonderful things that, uh, that people want to do. And we have so much to offer in Gravenhurst. Some of them now, even not only do they get off the bus, they get off the plane. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's true. true. Yes, that's, that's you're really absolutely kind of right. With the, with yeah. the yes, very so, yes, exciting. The Opera House does, I mean, they do live theater, they do yes. concerts, they do tribute bands, mm -hmm. um, they even do weddings. I mean, I, uh, there, there, there's Provost that meets there. I mean, there, there's, there, it, yes. it's a great place. So, so my question. <laughs> I've never been to an opera in the Opera House. I don't know there's ever been an opera performed in the Opera House. So why do we call it the Opera House? <laughs> that, is, that is a great question. And we don't want to say that we, we don't uh, ever want to do opera there because we have actually had a little bit of opera, uh, some fun opera that we um, that the Muskoka Concert Association presented to the high school. Um, but you're absolutely right. There really That was never really the intent of uh, building an opera house. Um, the reason why they were, you know, the same as the Aurelia Opera House, it was named that because it was fashioned, the design of it was fashioned as the, uh, after the grand opera houses in Europe. Mm -hmm.